Okay, so you've seen Frank. This is his brother Zot. And this is where he spends most of his time on one of our laps here. Say hello, Zot. He has cerebellar hypoplasia, I think it was what it's called. Uh, it's basically a kind of equivalent to cerebral palsy in cats. Uh, he has a, a moderate case of it. Um, he doesn't need any special assistance, really. He's uh, a happy-go-lucky kitty. Doesn't know there's anything wrong with him neurologically. It's just when he walks, his back end moves a little different. Moves independently of his front end, kind of. So uh, one of my nicknames for him is Mr. Floppy, because he does not have a great sense of balance and tends to fall over. Uh, but most of the time, he's just fine. He eats and uh, relieves himself, you know, litter boxes, uh, without any need for help or anything. Uh, but he's very attached to us, as is his brother. I We have never seen cats that have needed so much, uh, have had so much desire for human physical contact, lap time or something. It's like, yeah, these guys are just great. Uh, say hello one more time, Zot Zot. <laughs> Hello. Enjoy the video. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, here we are, chapter 11 of my whole darn CD collection. And believe it or not, we are just halfway through the stuff with vocals section of my CD collection. It, it's, I told you at the beginning, it was probably going to be a long, arduous journey, but I hope you've been enjoying it. I have been enjoying showing you my CD collection, warts and all, guilty pleasure, pleasures, not so guilty pleasures, and old favorites, uh, all time classics, what, do you, what have you. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I got a lot of ground to cover here, uh, so I might as well get started. Um, since I didn't have any uh, recent arrivals in the last, what, three or four chapters, uh, of my CD collection. Uh, that's the stuff that I have gotten and officially put into my collection up to the chapters I have covered so far. Uh, I didn't have any for the last three or four chapters, but now I have quite a few, so let me knock those out of the way first. Uh, some of these you probably saw in recent acquisitions videos, like uh, when, when uh, my cousin Tony showed you my uh, thrift store haul. For instance, this one, uh, Paula Abdul, Shut Up and Dance, the Remixes album. Yay, Paula! Uh, yes, I've uh, the uh, remixes of the hit singles from her first album, and a couple other things as well. So good stuff in here. And uh, this one, I think I found. Yeah, I think I found this at a thrift store as well. Clivier and Cole, uh, a remix album of theirs. Now these were the two guys behind the the remix uh, mixers and producers behind CNC Music Factory, the uh, uh, group that had a couple of hit singles back in the early '90s. And this is uh, a basically a compilation of stuff that they have remixed and produced for other artists. Uh, if you care to freeze frame, you can look at the uh, table of contents on here. Pretty impressive list of stuff. Um, the, the artists themselves, except Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam, we've heard of them, uh, and Shaka Khan. I'm finishing the re re remainders of a lifesaver, so that's why I'm, that's something in my mouth. Uh, and of course, some of their own CNC Music Factory hits on here. Uh, some of the names you might not recognize, uh, the, the originating artists, but uh, still a very fun collection. If you love New Jack Swing, that dance kind of uh, R&B pop that was popular back in the at the beginning of the 90s, you would like that, that CD. It's got quite a bit of it. Then we have um, this one I think I found... I can't remember if I found this at a thrift store or if I found it up at FYE a couple months ago when I went up, but uh, Sam Cohen is a singer-songwriter, and this is his album, Cool It. Uh, it's very good stuff. Uh, his, at least I believe this is the guy. Oh, no, this is not the guy. Uh, I was, yeah, never mind. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, he's got great, this is great stuff. Uh, very good singer-songwriter pop rock. Uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing really uh, distinctive or, you know, grabbing its own territory uh, of any sort. But it's it's very very nice, very fun kind of stuff. Pretty much right up my alley, I guess. Sometimes I just like the cookie cutter stuff. What can I say? 
and then this guy was not particularly cookie cutter. And we just lost this guy, was it earlier this year or was it late last year? Mac Davis. And this one I think I found at FYE. Uh, this is the his entry in the 20th Century Masters Millennium Collection series. Of course, he did the song Baby Don't Get Hooked on Me and uh, several other things. Uh, it's Hard to Be Humble, which opens up this uh, album. It's a live recording of that song. A great sense of humor in this guy's lyrics. And he, most of what he did was in the country genre, but there was some stuff that was not country. And I mean, uh, the song Secrets is a very good example of kind of the 70s AM radio pop R&B kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the guy uh, stretched his legs into other genres. He was not country. He was not strictly country. So, And the second song on here is called Hooked on Music. Naturally, I was... I gravitated toward that one, and there was another one. Uh, there was another one that uh, makes reference to actually uh, probably two more that make reference to uh, music, you know, artists or hit songs and stuff. Uh, so, uh, just one more reason to like the guy, in my opinion. Uh, I did not appreciate him. I really knew nothing about him until he passed away, which is an, an unfortunate uh, tendency of. Uh, a lot of us, I guess, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I plead guilty on that, and I'm probably not the only one. But anyway, this next one is courtesy of, this was actually a free gift from my little brother, my good friend, best friend, Noah, uh, a Duran Duran live album from their uh, 2011 tour, A Diamond in the Mind tour. This is mostly from their album, shoot, what was, oh, All You Need Is Now. <laughs> thank you, thank you guys for having a title track that I can... Uh, if I when I forget the name of the album, but yeah, stuff from All You Need Is Now, as well as pretty much every album uh, up to that. Uh, of course, their big hits Rio and uh, uh, the Reflex and all those other songs are part of their uh, the set list for that. Excellent, excellent album. Thank you, Noah. Appreciate it. And uh, then this next one I found at a thrift store. Uh, this is this was a duo called Evan and Jaron. Uh, Evan and Jaron is either Lowenstein or Levenstein. Uh, they're identical twins, uh, twin brothers. Yeah, they're twins, both of them. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's an old joke. Uh, so very good, and again, kind of like Sam Cohen, very uh, cookie-cutter pop rock song stylings, uh, but still very catchy. And uh, let's see, um, uh, Crazy for This Girl was their big hit single, as you can tell by the hype sticker. And uh, Ready or Not was another really fun, catchy song on here. Uh, yeah, they, they were probably... Um, the music powers that be probably pushed them into that pop sound, that radio-friendly pop sound, more than they really wanted. Uh, but, hey, it, it, got, it got the listens, and it got my attention, and I enjoyed it. Uh, I had that CD a while ago, but uh, got rid of it as I had many CDs. This is a very common story for me. I get rid of CDs and I eventually rebuy them, uh, usually for a lot less than I originally bought them for. So anyway, uh, this next one was in, I believe, the dollar section at Epic Seconds. Expose, their greatest hits. I had forgotten how many darn good songs Expose had in their discography until I listened to this uh, CD. And I, I got it just on a whim. Uh, let's see... Um Gosh, and I can't remember any of them. Oh, I'll Never Get Over You Getting Over Me. That was a, a great one. Seasons Change was, I think, their biggest hit. Uh, but yes, a lot of great stuff on here. Uh, the End of the World, that's a, a classic um, 40s or 50s uh, American songbook standard. They treat they do a, a single version of that. And uh, yeah, very good stuff. Great R&B if you like. Oh, um, of course, now that I've got the camera running, I can't think of any uh, artists. But, you know, um, girl groups, R&B, pop groups from the early 90s, late 80s, you will like Exposé if you have not tried them out yet. And this next one I found up at FYE, they had a big half-off section. Uh, new sealed CDs for 50% off. And Pure Comedy by Father John Misty was in there, so I gave it a try. I, of course, had heard ever since the album came out, heard nothing but rave reviews about it and never tried it out. And this was the opportunity to, and I tell you, the guy's lyrics are just the gospel truth. I got to tell you, he's just he just has a way with lyrics and storytelling on this album. Uh, I, I should have listened to it back when it first came out. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of kick myself for sleeping on it until now, but uh, an excellent thing. And then here's, we got a much more uh, 
much more mainstream thing. Uh, Genesis, their album We Can't Dance. Uh, of course, uh, the the well, it's not really the title track because the title the tri title track is called I Can't Dance. That was one of their singles, and uh, No Son of Mine, which was a it's a really heart wrenching song, and especially heart wrenching if you see the music video. Uh, that one, it's, it's kind of weird that they chose that song to open the album, uh, when the rest of it, uh, most of the rest of it is pretty lighthearted. Jesus, He Knows Me. That's a very good satire on the uh, uh, evangelical, uh, specifically the tel televangelists that were popular at the time. And uh, well, there was uh, Hold On My Heart, of course, is another great classic song there. So yeah. it's, if you like Genesis, uh, especially the 80s Genesis, that's uh, don't pass up that album. And this one, I think I found this one in the cheapo section at Epic Seconds as well. Are You Experienced by Jimmy, Jimi Hendrix. And uh, yeah, it's it was in, I mean, a couple little nicks on the album, but uh, I was kind of surprised that it was in actually really none at all. Uh, I, th I, think, I think it was in the $2.50 section. So not a bad grab at all for two and a half bucks. And then the final item in my, let's see, what do we have time? The, the time counter on my tablet shows the time in white, and I'm wearing a white shirt, so I have to put something up to that's why I'm doing that. Um, ten minutes in, so I better get get going. The last of the um, early arrivals is Hoja or Hoja. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, with their album Gong Show, it is a an a cappella album uh, for those of you who like that, and it is of uh, just just covers of classic pop songs. Staying Alive, the Bee Gees song, uh, Cecilia, the um, uh, Simon and Garfunkel hit, Sweet Dreams, the Eurythmics song, uh, Brown Eyed Girl, Van Morrison's hit. Friends in Low Places by Garth Brooks is on here. Uh, 500 Miles by The Proclaimers. Um, ABC, which I, I'm pretty sure was the uh, uh, Jackson 5 song. I Can Sleep, I can See Clearly, the Bill Withers hit. YMCA, the Village People. And Foolish Game of Love. That might be an original. I cannot remember what that one is. But yes, I just ran down the entire track listing. Uh, this is a great album. It's an independent uh, album uh, from Canada. So... Uh, those of you up in Canada might uh, be a little more successful at uh, finding this than those of us down here in the States. I'm not sure how I happened upon it, but uh, very fun, and I'm glad that I did. So let me grab a drink here before I get started. Get started with the, uh, continuing, the continuing saga of the regular A to Z rock and pop and country and everything with vocals. Uh, last time I, I left off with Ronan, Ronan Keating. He was a member of the UK pop group Boyzone back in the 90s and into the very beginning of the 2000s. And he, uh, he started a pretty successful solo career. He's still recording, although this is the last album of his that I own. This is his third album, Turn It On. Uh, there's a song on here called Turn It On Again. It is not a cover of the Genesis song. Uh, that's a great one. And uh, he he does a, a duet with Leanne Rhymes on this album. Last Thing on My Mind is the name of that song. And there are a couple of covers. Uh, she Believes in Me, the Kenny Rogers song. He does a really good uh, cover of that. And I thought there was another cover on here, but I cannot remember what it was now. But uh, yeah, he's a good artist. Uh, at least I, I like the beginning few albums in his uh, discography. Next up we have Angelique Kijo. She is an African uh, artist, uh, basically pop pop and R&B songs and stuff with a, a heavy dose of African um, elements in there. Great. She's got a gorgeous voice. I love her. I first found out about her on an album that I, I just recently picked back up, and yes, it's yet another one that I got rid of, but uh, she had a couple of... Um, American, you know, uh, not American, but there was one of one of one of them was British, but uh, some uh, big name pop and rock and R and B stars guested on this on this particular album, and uh, that kind of is what got uh, how she got my attention. Uh, so yes, I was very happy to pick this uh, this greatest hits album up, and uh, yeah, very very good stuff. Check out Angelique Kijo if you like uh, pop rock or R and B that's got a little bit of world music in it. Very good stuff. And now we are on to a solid rock band from Las Vegas. You can kind of see what it is by the spine. Yes, the Killers. 
I got their debut album, Hot Fuss. And I have pretty much their entire discography, Sam's Town, their sophomore album. Their B-Sides and Rarities collection, Stardust, or Sawdust, excuse me. Yep, that says Sawdust. And then their next album, Day and Age. Followed by Battleborn. And then one of my favorite albums of theirs, which, and it's, I think, for Killers fans, it's not one of their favorites. I'm kind of like that sometimes. Sometimes other people's least favorite album is my favorite album in their discography. Not sure if this is my favorite, but it, it's up there. Uh, wonderful, Wonderful. I really like that one. I thought it was Wonderful, Wonderful. And then coming up on their recent albums, Imploding the Mirage, as well as Pressure Machine. This is perhaps my least favorite of theirs. Or maybe I just maybe I just haven't warmed up to it. Maybe its moment with me has not yet arrived. And then we are into a classic blues artist. I really got into this artist thanks to my sister. We're talking B.B. King, and this is a duets album called Deuces Wild. And this one has, you got your Van Morrison, Tracy Chapman, Eric Clapton, Bonnie Raitt, D'Angelo, Dr. John, Rolling Stones, Joe Cocker, and the list goes on. Great duets album here. And then uh, one of my, f another one of my favorite uh, albums, uh, thanks to my sister, uh, we have Let the Good Times Roll. This is a tribute album to Louis Jordan, uh, who's another artist that I uh, came to my attention uh, well, partly thanks to my sister, but partly thanks to a 10-part uh, rock and roll documentary series called The History of Rock and Roll. Uh, but yes, uh, Louis Jordan's uh, songs filtered through B.B. King's blues influences. Beautiful. And then we have another B.B. King album, a collaborative album with Eric Clapton, uh, Riding with the King. And this was in my sister's collection. As was this one, The Ultimate Collection. So if you're looking for a BB King starter pack, check this one out. And then another, another is this a duets? Yeah, it's another duets album. Uh, 80, celebrating his 80th birthday. And on this one, we've got uh, Billy F. Gibbons from ZZ Top, Cheryl Crow, Daryl Hall, uh, John Mayer, Mark Knopfler, Glenn Fry. <laughs> I mean, if anyone's got the clout to draw the big names for a, for a duets album... It is the late, great B.B. King. Gotta love him. Even if you don't like blues, you gotta ch at least check out B.B. King. Trust me. And then we have another King, Carol King. And this is actually the only studio album of hers that I have on CD. Uh, this is, of course, her big hit, Tapestry. One of the albums that I think every music fan should have in their collection. Even if, you don't, even if it's not one of your favorites, it's just an absolute milestone of popular music. And then this one, this was not in my sister's collection, but, uh, or I could have sworn she had it at one time, but I think, uh, I mean, obviously her brother-in-law and her stepkids got first pick over her CDs before my brother-in-law brought them to me. So I think this was in her collection, but, uh, was claimed by someone other than me. Uh, Live at the Troubadour, Carol, Carol King and James Taylor. Oh, this is just sublime. I am telling you, just... Uh, I, you, you can't not love this album, really. Fantastic, beautiful. And it actually has a DVD, I think. Yes. It's got, as the booklet falls out, a CD and a DVD. And pardon me while I put the booklet back in. This might be one of the longer installments in my CD collection series. So, anyway, on to The Kinks. This is the two-disc ultimate collection. Uh, I like The Kinks enough that I might... Uh, I could be persuaded to get their individual albums, but they had so many non-album singles that I decided to, to go easy on myself, make it easy on myself, and my shelf space by picking this up. And this, yeah... You pretty much, anybody who is not a huge, huge fan of the Kinks would be perfectly happy with this collection. It's got all the all their best songs on here. And then another artist who, uh, I'll, have to I'll have to talk about these guys a little bit more in one of my videos. Uh, I have an um, idea for a topic 
that I will talk about later, but uh, Kiss, uh, the very best of. this. I think this was in a uh, uh, at a thrift store. I picked it up. So, yeah, pretty good stuff. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the band, but uh, they got some good stuff. And then here we have uh, another CD from my sister's collection, Gladys Knight and the Pips, with their two-disc gold collection. Every hit you could ever want from Gladys Knight and the Pips is on here. And uh, she, there's a couple of her uh, uh, solo singles, like uh, License to Kill, the song from the James Bond movie. Now this group, I can't remember if I found this up at Music Millennium or if I found it at um, uh, Skips during its going, going out of business sale, but I never heard of these guys, but they're, the guest artists on here persuaded me to pick it up. They're called the Knox. They are basically one of the, one of these uh, production duos, kind of like uh, the Chainsmokers. And they have uh, the one that really, guest artist that really got my attention is Walk the Moon, because I'm a big Walk the Moon fan. They've also got um, Carly Rae Jepsen, Justin Tranter is on here, Wyclef Jean, and Ex Ambassadors. So, uh, yeah, a, a fairly good list of guest artists on here. And uh, pretty darn good music as well. And then this one will make Noah and especially Alyssa happy, although they might not be super happy if by, if they find out that this is the only album of theirs that I have, at least thus far. That is Codaline, uh, their debut album, In a Perfect World. Very, very good rock group. Um, I just I, I need to take the time to check more of their music out, definitely. Now this guy is uh, dipping back into our uh, into my uh, worldwide idol collection. This guy was from the Finland. He was a winner of one of the seasons of the Finland version of Idol. Ari Koivonen, I think is how you pronounce the name. But yeah, this guy is um, hard rock, which is kind of unusual for an Idol uh, winner to uh, to be in that genre. But yeah, this is very good stuff. I haven't listened to this in a few years, but. Uh, and it's it's mostly it's pretty much all in English, uh, so yeah, very good stuff. And so at some point, I will talk about my World Idol collection and, and maybe do a top ten list of my favorite World Idol artists and probably my favorite American Idol artists too. So. And then we move on to a rock band that I got into oh about four or five years ago, and uh, still enjoy to this day the Kooks. With their this is their debut album Inside Out, oh Inside In Inside Out, and their sophomore album Conk, their third album Junk of the Heart. They had the interesting album titles, didn't they? And then their fourth album Listen. Uh, this is the Japanese uh, version with the Obi strip here, and it's got. I think this was one of those where they had the uh, standard and deluxe editions, and the deluxe edition had what two or three more songs, and but the Japanese edition has those deluxe tracks plus an additional three or four songs. So loaded up uh, a loaded track list on that one, and then their subsequent album, "Let's Go Sunshine." I really enjoyed this one. Uh, what is the song? The song "Chicken Bone." Is one of my probably my favorite kook song, so check that one out. It's uh, very catchy and very fun. And this is again is the Japanese release. And then they just recently put out a new album, uh, their first one in oh just a couple of years I think. Yeah, twenty eighteen. So well, four years. Uh, Ten tracks to echo in the dark, and it's a very good album. Kind of right up there with uh, the rest of their albums. Although this one has a little bit more of a um, dance pop influence. Uh, I was I got very strong Duran Duran vibes from listening to this to this album. So uh, if you like Duran Duran, check that album out. And then we have uh, another kind of like Mac Davis. This is another entry in the Millennium Collection series. Cool in the Gang. You gotta love Cool in the Gang. Uh, Celebration, of course. Jungle Boogie. We have Joanna, one of their great ballads, and uh, Cherish is another fantastic ballad of theirs. Get Down On It. This, this is just one of the greatest greatest hits of the 70s. They were one of the big uh, disco and post-disco 
acts uh, and have a big reputation for that for a reason. And how are we doing now? Oh, 23 minutes. So anyway, this guy was, I think, another guy that was at a, the thrift store. Stephen Kowalczyk. He goes by another name now, and I did not make notes for this video. I usually don't with my CD collection videos, full confession, because just before I, I get ready to film the video, I just take the CDs off my shelf, and I didn't look ahead to see what was next after I did the last chapter. So I go into these unprepared, sorry to say. But uh, yes, very good stuff. Um, easy listening slash jazz stuff. A very, very good vocalist. So, but yes, um, he, as I said, he goes by a different... <clears throat> goes by a different name now, and I have not checked out any of his subsequent albums. This is his debut album, so but still very, very good. And now we're getting into another artist that I have come to really, really enjoy, thanks to my sister, Diana Krall. This is her album, When I Look in Your Eyes. I've got about eight or nine of her albums, so uh, sit tight as I go, go through them. The Look of Love, uh, the title track is great. And uh, Crimea River is on here as well. And then we have Live in Paris, a live album of hers. And then The Girl in the Other Room. And the, uh, the European Super Jewel Box version of From This Moment On. So I, I don't have the titles of the albums memorized, so sue me. And, uh, yes, this one, as I recall, this one has a bonus track or two on it. But, uh, yeah. And then, uh, the first, this is the first album of hers that I listened to. And so, uh, it will always kind of remind me a little bit more of my sister than any of her other albums, Quiet Nights. And this is actually a deluxe edition that has a DVD with it. But uh, yes, uh, lots of great stuff on here. Um, most of these, I think, are, the, are the, the this I think is a tribute, more or less, to uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim, and it has the boy from Ipanema, the a, a uh, gender swap version of the girl from Ipanema, uh, possibly my favorite Diana Krall song. Although she does a great rendition of "Walk On By," the song that Dionne Warwick made famous, and she she I just love her. She has kind of a smoky voice. Sort of, just a very, very uh, chanteuse. She's very chanteuse <laughs> Anyway, uh, here we have Glad Rag Doll. This one was a little bit different. It had songs that were not very famous. I know the rest of her discography is basically uh, 40s and 50s and 60s uh, American songbook standards. This one covered mostly some more off-the-beaten-path stuff from like the 30s and I think reaching even back into the 20s. So this was a bit of an, an unusual thing. And I think it might have been one of the albums that was not more successful, perhaps for that reason. And then she kind of uh, bounced back in the other direction for her next album, Wallflower. She does a lot of uh, 60s and 70s pop on this album. So well, let's see. Um, a California Dreamin', the Mamas and Papas song. Desperado by the Eagles. She does a cover of that. And uh, she has a couple of great... Oh, I Can't Tell You Why, which is... That was also an Eagle song, I think. And she has several great guest appearances on here. Uh, Michael Bublé, Brian Adams, and this is the uh, the Complete Sessions uh, uh, volume. So it has like six or eight bonus tracks on it. Uh, Don't Dream It's Over, the Crowded House song. So, I mean, she really kind of uh, reaches uh, across several decades for this. And... Uh, I'm Not In Love, the 10cc uh, single. Sorry seems to be the hardest word, the Elton John song. So That might be my favorite Diana Krall album. And then her following album, Turn Up The Quiet. I need, I need to try and race through these to an extent, because I don't want to make this video painfully long. And then her most recent album, This Dream Of You. Uh, this, one was, uh, this one took a while for me to really get into. Uh, and it's, it's still one of my less one of my less favorite Diana Krall albums, but uh, so and this one was a few years ago. It's about time for her to put out a new one. Oh no, she put out one with uh, Tony Bennett since then. So never mind, or maybe it was before this one. I can't remember. Anyway, on to another artist that I have a 
fair little chunk of a discography from, and that is Lenny Kravitz. Uh, yes, uh, this, I got this guy's CDs from uh, the same eBay seller, I think it was, that I got the Jamiroquai and Foo Fighters um, uh, lots from on eBay. This guy was selling most... Oh, no, actually, no. Scratch that. This is this was a different seller. Never mind. Uh, but, yeah, I, I got a big chunk of discography from just one eBay sale. So, yeah, this is his debut album, Let Love Rule. And, uh, yeah, some good songs on here. I won't take the time to mention uh, my favorite songs just because I don't want to make this video long. And then we have Mama Said, his next album. And then Are You Gonna Go My Way? This was, I think, his breakthrough hit. Uh, the title track, of course, was great. And there was another good song on here. I think. Anyway, I can't remember. It's, it's not easy to read. As you can see, it's kind of red, dark red text on uh, a multicolored background. And we have his follow-up album, Circus. And then his album, Five. This one has a couple of really good songs on here. Uh, Black Velveteen was, it was okay. Uh, Fly Away was his big, big hit single. And then American Woman was on here as a bonus track. So, uh, yes, it was released in a you know, in its first incarnation, and they put a couple bonus tracks, including American Woman, on for its re-release. So, And then uh, Lenny, his next album, followed by the most recent one of his that I have, and that is Baptism. So, uh, The song California is one of my favorites on here. And Where Are We Running? That was one of his hit singles. It's also on there. Let me take a drink of water here. The old throat gets a little parched after a while, you know? I'm only at 30 minutes, and I'm more than halfway through, so I think I'll be good for time. Anyway, moving on to another... Um, this is a singer-songwriter that uh, I have a bit of a fondness for. I have three of his albums. He may not be everybody's cup of tea because he's a little bit uh, quirky, a little bit idiosyncratic. He doesn't have the most polished voice in the world, but then again, that's kind of part of his thing. That's what makes him him. Uh, ben Queller is his name. And he was part of a... He was part of a group that I, whose name I can't remember, so never mind. Uh, but yes, this is his debut solo album, Shasha. And uh, In Other Words is a fantastic song. I mean, you could tell right off the bat, his first solo album, he had an incredible gift for songwriting. So check out the song In Other Words. That is an excellent, excellent song. <clears throat> and I thought there was another really good song on here. Uh, Lizzie is pretty good. And then his uh, follow-up album, On My Way, is another good one. Um, the Rules is a good song on here. And it's been a while since I've listened to these. I've, I've noticed by going through the track listing. And then his self-titled album, his third solo release, and uh, Penny on the Train Track is one of my favorites. And uh, I Gotta Move is another good song. So check out Ben Queller if you like that kind of lo-fi indie rock. In a way, he kind of reminds me of Beck. Although Beck has a, a more polished voice, I guess you'd say. But still, he's, he's got a lot of appeal. He's got a lot of character, definitely. So check out Ben Queller. And then here we are. Here, here we are. <laughs> Hardy har har. Uh, along with, uh, kind of in line with The Knox, which I showed a few minutes ago, another uh, production uh, EDM artist, I guess you'd say, uh, Kaigo. I got this as his debut album, Cloud Nine. And uh, Codeline fans, including Noah and Alyssa, uh, there is a song on here featuring Codeline. It is called Raging. And he's also got uh, Tom O'Dell on here. That was a huge selling point for me for this album. In fact, this album may be how I discovered Tom O'Dell. I can't remember which, uh, you know, whether it was the chicken or the egg that came first, so to speak. But, uh, yeah. And John Legend is on here as well. And the text on here is just small enough that I'm having a little trouble reading it. Uh, Julia Michaels is on here also. 
so and foxes so a pretty good assemblage of guest artists on here and then i also have his uh, sophomore album kids in love and was this a no it's not a japanese edition but it's got bonus tracks on it uh, i've got john newman another one of my favorite uh singer songwriter type artists who's done a lot of uh well i guess uh tom odell hasn't done a lot of guesting on other artists but uh john, john newman is one of those where i he's only put out two studio albums so i kind of have to collect every time i hear about him guest vocalizing on somebody else's song i kind of have to go get it and check it out mm, excuse me and we have uh one Republic is also on here, and Selena Gomez and Ellie Goulding also make appearances on this album. So. And then we have this one. I think was in a uh, was it in a bargain bag or was it just on the dollar shelf? Patty Labelle and her album "Be Yourself," great stuff. The only Patty Labelle album that I have, and listening to it i don't know why it's the only one i have because she is great gotta love her and then we have lady gaga who doesn't like lady gaga well a lot of people i guess don't like lady gaga she's not everybody's cup of tea and for a long time she wasn't mine uh but yeah until i guess it was when she came out with born this way is when i really kind of uh jumped the fence for her and yes, this is the Fame Monster, her the two-disc version of the Fame. And then we, of course, have Born This Way. And this is the uh, two-disc deluxe edition. And then Art Pop, probably my least favorite album of hers. And then Joanne, which was a very, very interesting, very low-key uh, Lady Gaga album. Those of you who hate Lady Gaga and you still but you still think maybe you should give her a try, I would recommend this one because it's the most the least in your face that Lady Gaga has ever been, except maybe for her duets album with duets albums with Tony Bennett. I mean that's something if you want something completely different. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty good. And then of course we have Chromatica. Its name com I completely brain farted on the name of this album for a second. But, uh, yeah. Love her or hate her, Lady Gaga is herself. You, you cannot deny that. And another artist who is themselves or himself is Adam Lambert. And this is the... I, this is a Argentinian? Or is it a Japanese? No, it's not a Japanese version. But, uh, or maybe it's just a, uh, a European version of his debut album, For Your Entertainment. It's got uh, several bonus tracks on here, but uh, yeah. Adam Lambert completely captivated me the moment he was on American Idol. I mean, the guy knew how to own a stage from day one. And uh, yeah, and so I got his sophomore album, Trespassing. I, I might like this album a little bit more than his debut. Uh, but And again, this is the deluxe edition. So, yeah. And sad to say, though, uh, that, that is the last al Adam Lambert album that I have. I think I picked up, did I pick up his uh, third album and I did not like it? I cannot remember. Maybe I need to check it out again. Uh, and then we have an artist who, he's put out several albums and I had one recently, one of his most recent albums. I didn't care for it much, or at least it, it, it shrunk on me after a while, so I got rid of it. So this is the only Johnny Lang album that I have, and it is called Long Time Coming. Uh, he is, uh, he started out as a blues artist. And the voice on this guy, when he was like 16 years old, was when he started recording. He had the voice of a 40-year-old blues veteran. I mean, it's just an unbelievable, <clears throat> as I start to lose my own voice, an unbelievable voice on this guy. And But this was his most, his most mainstream rock album, uh, with you know the least bluesy album that he, put, that he ever put out. And he has, since, the, since this album, he's gone on into a bit more of a gospel direction so a more of a gospel blues kind of thing which is which is one reason i have not really followed him since uh then then we have an artist who uh my sister enjoyed and i've got a few albums thanks to her 
Katie Lang, uh, Ingenue is her big hit breakthrough, with the song Constant Craving, one of the absolute classics. And then Invincible Summer. Is that what's, yeah, Invincible Summer is the next album of hers that I have. I also have ah, I also have a live album, Live by Request. A nice, uh, and this is kind of a nice uh, um, alternative to picking up her individual albums. You kind of have a little bit from each of several <coughs> each of several albums to check out. I guess I need to take another drink. Excuse me. And then uh, the last album of hers that I have is Hymns of the 49th Parallel. Hymns of? Yeah. So I wasn't sure if it was of or from, but Hymns of the 49th Parallel, an album covering a bunch of Canadian singer-songwriters, Neil Young, um, Cohen, what's his first name? I am brain farting like mad today. Leonard Cohen. There we go. It, it was in there somewhere. I knew it. Uh, Joni Mitchell. And uh, yeah, the list goes on. Bruce Coburn. So yeah. Very good album. Very understated album, as her albums usually are. And then here we have a rock band who, as far as I know, this was the only album they put out, but it was a doozy. The Last Good Night is their name. And this is their album, The Poison Kiss. I loved this, al this album. It is... 2007, so it is 15 years old now. Crazy. But uh, yeah, a lot of fantastic songs on here. They remind me a little bit of the, um, oh, you know, Panic at the Disco and um, Fall Out Boy, maybe a little bit. Not quite as emo as those guys, but still, they just they have a great personality. This kind of gives you a Fueled by Ramen label feel to uh, the songs. Uh, they they would have they would have sounded right at home on that label in other words, but uh, yeah the title track is great and uh, pictures of you was their their one and only single I think, and it did okay, uh, but unfortunately, yeah this these guys just were not successful or at least this this album was not successful and they kind of disappeared, and I hate that because this album was so good, uh, stay beautiful is another good song, uh, this is the sound, and. Uh, if I Talk to God, that was a good song. And let's see, what was the really good? Oh, Incomplete. My favorite song on this album is Incomplete. Check it out. That is, it is freaking awesome. One of my favorite songs from that decade. Incomplete by The Last Good Night. Listen to it. And now we have an album going from an artist that pretty much almost nobody has heard of to an artist that pretty much everybody has heard of, Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper with her album, uh, She's So Unusual. I don't know what's wrong with my memory today, but uh, I, I do not even need to talk about this album. I just recently acquired it on LP, but I am I still have the CD. I want this one on LP as well, uh, True Colors, the follow-up. And of course, the title track is absolutely gorgeous, one of my favorite songs ever. Uh, she also covers Iko Iko, the uh, classic folk song. Uh, and Change of Heart is another great, great song. And I am seeing a lot of dust on the top of this. I, I am... The dust on the tops of these CDs is betraying the truth of how often I dust my room. Almost never. Anyway, uh, and on we go to another spunky solo ar pop rock artist with attitude, female pop rock artist with attitude, Avril Lavigne. Uh, you just saw this one in my St. Uh, my uh, Saint Vinny's Hall video, Let Go. Uh, and uh, this is the only album of hers that I have so far. I might give her sophomore album another try. I was not impressed with it back in the day when I heard it, but might have to give it another try. Then we have Christine Lavin. She is a folk artist. I think it's Lavin. It might, it might be Lavin. But I heard about one of her songs on the Dr. Demento show strangely enough. And she's not really a... I mean, she puts a lot of humor, uh, wry humor, occasionally self-deprecating humor, and a lot of satire in her song lyrics, but she's not she's not a novelty artist in that sense. But um, this is not the album that has that song on it. But uh, the title track on this album, for instance, is Good Thing He Can't Read My Mind. So, uh, 
Yes, she does have a great sense of humor. And then her follow-up album, Attainable Love. And this is the album that had the song that was a minor hit on the Dr. Demento show, Sensitive New Age Guys. It was kind of a parody of the the New Age, uh, I guess, kind of a uh, precursor to the metrosexual movement that came about in the 2000s when guys started getting, uh, you know, getting in touch with their, their sensitive sides. Uh, she, this was kind of a satire. That track was kind of a satire on that whole uh, men's movement, if you will. Uh, I, maybe you had to be there. I don't know. But anyway, uh, this is her follow-up album, Compass. And uh, yes, she's she's an excellent artist. I mean, I, I I picked up the CDs because of that one song, Sensitive New Age Guys, and ended up uh, rather enjoying her and appreciating her uh, her talent as well as her um, her humorous uh, side with her lyrics and uh, ability to write great lyrics. So, yeah, good artist. Now, this one is an uh, an artist you may not have heard of, and I can't. I honestly cannot remember now how I how I heard of. The one song of theirs that, uh, oh, was it uh, Underwear Goes Inside the Pants is the uh, song that uh, attracted me to these guys. Uh, they're called Lazy Boy, and this is their album Lazy Boy TV. They're kind of a, they're almost like a plunder phonics sort of group, kind of like, a, kind of like Pogo that um, uh, Garrett over at Yes is a fan of Pogo. Uh, these guys, I think these guys pretty much, though, create their own beats. And stuff they just get a lot of sound bites from all over everywhere and uh, pepper their pepper the beats with these sound bites and stuff and uh, facts of life and inhale positivity are two examples of that and uh, this actually comes with a DVD of music videos as well but uh, yes underwear goes inside the pants features a comedian let's see if I can remember his name Greg Giraldo now see I I I couldn't remember Leonard Cohen's name, but somehow Greg Giraldo's name just popped right into my head. Anyway, uh, it's it's built around uh, Underwear Goes Inside the Pants, the track, is built around a stand-up comedy monologue of Greg Giraldo's. Uh, and so, and the rest of the album kind of takes off from there. Kind of a bunch of factoids uh, on various topics laid over their own beats. Kind of a, so maybe in, in retrospect, maybe they're not quite so much plunder phonics as I was starting to label them for. Uh, but then, and anyway, I've got a CD single, uh, the Inhale Positivity single, which has um, one or two songs that were not on the album. And I couldn't piggyback this onto this because it already has a DVD in here. So that j just explaining that, I don't know why. But anyway. Yeah. Then we have a... <clears throat> A winner or finalist in the Brazilian Idol show from I couldn't tell you what year it is, but Leandro is his name, and his uh, this, oh, Por Voce is the name of the of the album, and I'm probably uh, butchering the pronunciation of that. I am not that familiar with Portuguese, but yes, a lot of these songs are in Portuguese. Uh, very very good stuff. Part of my World Idol collection, and then this guy I found. This CD was new and sealed at House of Records for $4, and uh, it just kind of, for some reason, it caught my eye. Uh, his name is Dylan, Leblanc, Dylan, Leblanc, Dylan LeBlanc. There you go. That's a good thing this video is almost over because I'm starting to lose my ability to enunciate. But yes, uh, it came out in 2019, and 2019 was not over yet, or 2019 was when I bought it. And uh, it ended up in uh, in my favorite albums of the year, and it was just a complete impulse buy that I just picked up, never having heard a word of his music. Uh, yes, um, a bit of a uh, Americana sound to him, singer songwriter, kind of an Americana, slightly country, vaguely country, but not too much. But yes, a very good artist, uh, very very good artist. And then we come into a well, a small discography. I have. Less of this artist's discography than I used to have. Uh, but uh, still, i still got a few albums. Ben Lee is his name. He's an Australian artist. Uh, Breathing Tornadoes is the name of this album. And this one is very different from the rest of his albums in that this has a lot of samples in it. Uh, you know, samples and techno beats and that kind of stuff. And it was probably the... the uh, 
people that had been listening to him were probably very much turned off by this guy, but this was the first album that was really promoted in the States uh, of this guy, so people here didn't really know any better. And I like his more singer-songwriter stuff more than this album, but still, I like this album. It it's definitely has its moments. And then his follow-up album, Hey You, Yes You. It's got some good stuff on here. Um, Aftertaste is a good song, and that, that song was in the soundtrack from the TV show One Tree Hill. And so that was kind of gave him a little bit of a pro uh, promotional push, I guess you'd say. And uh, Dirty Mind is another pretty good song on here. And a uh, good song, but my favorite uh, album of his by a long shot is Awake is the New Sleep. Uh, so much so that I actually have this on LP as well, but I was I am not ready to give up the CD, at least not yet. But pretty much every song on this album is just excellent. Uh, Gamble Everything for Love is, uh, I love that one. Catch My Disease is a fantastic song. And then the Into the Dark is another excellent, excellent song. We're All in This Together, I love that one. And the list goes on. Uh, yeah. So yeah, And it, it's, it's not a short album either. It's got 14 tracks on it. But yes, uh, if you want to check out Ben Lee, this is the album that I would recommend. Awake is the New Sleep. It's fantastic. Uh, so much so that I have two of the singles from uh, the al from that album. Uh, and I've talked before how I make my own inserts and piggyback when I have more than one CD single. I keep the original J cards in case I ever feel like getting rid of the single. But uh, yes, the singles for Catch My Disease and Into the Dark are on here. And each one has B-sides that were not on the album. So, And that is it for Ben Lee. Uh, after this album, he kind of started getting into... He started sounding repetitive for the next couple of albums, and then he really kind of went off into a kind of a new age, trippy sort of uh, direction that I just didn't quite get, uh, couldn't quite follow, follow him. So... He kind of lost me, I guess you'd say. So, uh, but still, those albums I don't think I will ever get rid of. Uh, next, we move on to John Legend, his debut album, Get Lifted. Uh, you all know probably enough about that. I don't need to talk about it. Besides, I if I want to keep this album, this uh, video under an hour, I should uh, move on. I've only got about seven more CDs to talk about anyway. But uh, then this guy here, Gregory Le Marchal, uh, he was a um, he was not on the French Idol show, but a, a an imitation show called Star Academy, which the same general concept, but it was not an Idol show. And he was the winner during his, I believe, the winner during his particular season. And this is his debut album. And the songs are all in French, and he has a fantastic, uh, almost opera-worthy voice. Just a great, gorgeous, uh, resonant, kind of a soaring voice. Beautiful voice. And... Uh, Tragically, he passed away just a few years after this album. Uh, he had cystic fibrosis. And uh, yes, he, he unfortunately lost his battle with cystic fibrosis when he was 23 or 22. So, yeah. And I, uh, if memory serves, this was the only album he put out um, before he passed away. A couple other albums came out, but they were posthumous. And so kind of didn't feel right buying those. You know, just... For some reason, it just felt like a cash grab, you know, more so than other posthumous albums. Then, anyway, uh, on to the next one we have, John Lennon. Uh, this one I found, can't remember where I found it, but, oh yeah, it was in the budget section at Everyday Music up in Portland, still sealed, one dollar. And it was, it's the John Legend, the John Lennon collection. Why it was sealed and it was on sale for a dollar, who knows, but, uh, and yeah, not a huge John Lennon fan, so this is pretty much all that I care to have of his. Yeah. I like the Beatles. I'm not an obsessive Beatles fan. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. The, the time may come in the future when I do become an obsessive Beatles fan, but it hasn't happened yet. Next up, we have Annie Lennox. This is her debut solo album, Diva. Uh, she was half of Eurythmics, those of you who may not know. 
And this is, in my opinion, one of the all-time best albums of the entire decade of the 90s. When I do my favorite albums of the 90s, this will be up there, probably in the top 10. Spoiler alert. But yes, and this album has never seen a deluxe reissue. Or, you know, an expanded or remastered re-release. And I have no idea why. It is an absolutely epic album. Walking on Broken Glass. I love that song. And uh, Why is another great song. So, yeah. Fantastic album. And I do have all of her other solo albums. Actually, no. I don't have her latest one, Nostalgia. Uh, but none of them hold a candle to Diva. We have Medusa, her, her follow-up. Uh, no More I Love Yous, of course, is a great song. Uh, Wider Shade of Pale, the Procol Harum song. She does a great cover of that. And uh, Train in Vain, a song by uh, The Clash. Actually, yeah, now that I remember, this is actually a covers album. So, uh, yeah. Great, great album. And then the next one, which, what, did she have like a 10-year gap between these albums? 1995 and 2003, so eight years it would take her to put out her next album, Bear, which was very, very good. Uh, possibly my least favorite Annie Lennox album. And came her next one, Songs of Mass Destruction. Uh, the song... She was Ghosts in My Machine is my favorite song off of this album. Excuse me. I guess fantastic. And uh, I thought there was one that... Uh, Sorry, losing my train of thought. I thought that she did a do um, collaboration with two or three other female artists, but I think that's that's on a completely different. I think that was on a Eurythmics album, if I remember correctly. See, I t I'm telling you, there's something weird going on with my memory today. I don't know what it is. Anyway, the last artist and next to last CD I will be showing you today is by an artist whose name I'm probably going to screw up, Christian Leontiu. I think is how you pronounce it. But yes, this was a uh, uh, a blind buy or deaf purchase, I guess you'd say, from Tower Records, one of my last stops ever at a Tower Records. This was in the imports clearance bin, and the, uh, the blurb there on the hype sticker kind of got my attention, so I decided to pick it up, and I'll be darned if the hype sticker uh, was worth the hype, I guess you'd say. I ended up really, really enjoying this album. Uh, I'd have trouble just, you know, comparing this guy to a certain other artist. Uh, maybe, oh, what's his name? Daniel Powder. Uh, he's, you know, he. Daniel Powder was kind of a one hit wonder here in the States. So, though, you know, some of you might not even remember that uh, or get that reference. But uh, kind of the same. It's kind of singer songwriter, but it's still pop. Pop with a little bit of electronica and RB in it. But uh, yeah, Shining is a great, great song on here. Um, it's okay. It's okay is a fantastic one. Caught in the Moment is another good one. I mean, I could name half the track list on here, and it's just uh, I, they would. Uh, they're all great, great songs. And I like this album so much that I have two singles. And again, this is one of my homemade inserts. And the singles are piggybacked on each other. The singles from Some Say, which is another excellent single off that album, and Story of My Life. Each one has a B-side that was not on the album. So, yes, Some Say might be my favorite song off of that album, Someday Soon. So, anyway, I guess that is about it, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I guess I want to cut this out. Yeah, this video is a, an hour long, so that'll do it for Chapter 11 of my Hold On CD collection. I hope you enjoy this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends, and give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.